So this is going to be a bonus of sorts in the series of me reading Trump's wall, which is the post-its that were posted on the Union Square subway station right after Donald Trump won his uh, presidential election. I posted Trump train was to Magaland, and then I took a video and uh, recorded all these things that you see here, took photos, and I've been doing this series where I kind of just read things, and I keep in mind that people literally mean figuratively, and I'm trying to understand what what this whole Trump train thing was, what this Trump effect was, because I still think it was for everyone. I think it has an effect on people in the world. And other people have thought this, and other people have done, I think, a lot more than I have. Most definitely people have done a lot more than I have in that attempt to talk about this, to actually unite people. And I think there's a lot of people who have taken this as a chance to try and divide people and try and push these things. And that's kind of going to be the topic of this one, talking about somebody who talked about people being united on this, united in opposition to Trump. And I go into more of an effect or of something that I saw a celebrity do, somebody else do, that I thought could have been a rather positive thing. And it might have united people because it also united a group of people against what that person was intending to do. So there is this kind of thing. And I think with politics, maybe this is part of it. With politics, it seems to be easier to get people to vote against somebody than it is to convince them to vote for you. It's like, hey, don't vote for that person because this person is horrible. I'm not as bad as that person, rather than, hey, look, look at all these good things about me. Don't worry about that person. Just focus on what I have. So maybe there is something about people being united against something rather than people coming united for something. Now on to the reading. Trump will unite us, his enemies, or our to his enemies. So as I mentioned, I was in the United States at this time. There was this thing where... <laughs> I remember hearing about Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf is an actor in the United States of America. He was an Even Stevens back in the day on the Disney Times. And then I think he got to more worldwide fame as being uh, Sam Witwicky in the Transformers movies. I think he was in three of them or something. But yeah, he was Sam Witwicky in those movies. And he he's... Um, uh, He's, 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 a very, he's a very unique soul, I'd say, a <laughs> unique guy. He seems to have some troubles with himself, and he just recently did a movie about his childhood called Honey Boy or something like that, and he directed, he played his dad into it, and it seems to have some challenges. And one thing with celebrities that I've said, people look at celebrities and they say, oh, that person has no idea how our lives, how average people live, but they also make judgments on how this celebrity should behave or think or put them down or just make quality judgments about those people's lives. But if somebody's life is so alien from yours that they can't understand your life, then are you also unable to understand their life? So if a certain celebrity, you're saying that person's life is so alien, they're so outside, they have such a different life, they can't really talk about my life with any validity, how do you have enough knowledge about that person's life to have any validity about their life? And if anything, in some cases, you have celebrities that had a, quote, normal, unquote, life before they became celebrities, yet most of us who've had these normal lives don't have a post-normal life celebrity. So they can, might be able to call back, like Jennifer Lopez might be able to call back to when she was Jenny on the Block and have something to say about what Jenny on the Block is going through. But Jenny on the Block, can she really deal with ever having to deal with a multi-continental tour that handles, that employs thousands of people in different ways, in different venues, and millions of dollars are being jumped around. There, there are certain stressors that have that, that I personally, I can't imagine right now wanting to have a life like that. And if I do have a life like that, I can imagine all the stresses that come with that. Okay, so either way, I was introducing this to Shia LaBeouf to kind of explain some of the stresses that he's had. And he might have one of those unique lives because, like I said, he was a child actor. And he's had these stresses from when he's a kid. We've had our stresses from our parents in many cases. Or some of us, our parents have been more supportive in different ways. But his dad seemed to want to push him to be this successful actor with high standards on him. And it has had some positive and negative effects, I would say, on his personality. I seem to think he's a trouble soul. I don't think I would mind actually having conversations with him and seeing like, okay, what's this guy about? He doesn't seem to be 
ill <laughs> he doesn't seem to have ill will even though some of the things he does might come out strange and this is a whole aside just to come back to this whole thing this whole thing is like trump will unite us there was this thing shia labeouf came out and said and i was thinking at the time and this is just me not going through with certain ideas of just getting a website or getting a location where you just say like okay we're going to actually just talk to people and this is what i'm trying to do with talking about these with posting these things trying to have a conversation with people who like trump who dislike trump who are not really involved in the situation trying to understand that's why i like this wall because people were posting things so we can engage and have a conversation and he had this thing where it was he will not unite us I and mean, he will not divide us h-w-n-d-u um and it turned out to be this whole meme war type of thing with people on Reddit and going around. But the, the initial time when I heard about it was this little wall, ca- wall with a camera where people would go there and talk about something. It was, he will not divide us. And I thought it was like, oh, this is going to be a grand thing where people can go and just talk about their experience, their fears about Trump, their support for Trump, their idea of what the United States of America, what they think is lost, what they think make America great again means what they fear about to make America great again, what they like about other people who they might be in a group that supposedly hates these people, from what they think about other people who are supposedly supposed to fear these other people and things like that, and have a situation where actually he will not divide us, where it's a situation where I was just kind of talking about this. But it seemed to come more from an angle of he was anti-Trump, and it turned out to be a thing where it was more people going and just literally, there was times people were literally just sitting there and just repeating the mantra, he will not divide us, he will not divide us, he will not divide us. And that's what I'm saying, there's a religious aspect of this. That is a religious thing, just going and singing the hymns back to back, reading the verses, recitation, repetition. That is part of a religious experience with some people, rather than being an engaging conversational type of thing, which I was hoping it was going to be. And it turned out to be this whole thing. He had some seeming me- mental breakdowns with this whole thing, people trolling him, people going there. There was this one person, Brittany Venti, she went there and she, there's this clip of just her just yelling like, eh! <laughs> it's it's just, it turned out to be this odd thing. Then he went around and he had other locations and then people did things triangulating um, the location of where he was by the wind speed of this flagpole with this sign and things like this and the time of day and they found it, takes a flag down. He goes to somewhere in Europe or something in a cabin and somebody took the time to go through the internet and check which cabins were for rent in that location and then check the wood grain on the back and then match it and be like, yeah, he's in this location and they tracked him down. And I think he's recently posted something up again with his hero not you divide us thing but my whole thing this guy wrote this unite the enemies but look at the democratic party right now is the democratic party united are the people who were anti-trump who are the opposition of trump are they more united now than they were in 2016 i don't think so that is part of why i think it's going to be a landslide i don't think the democrats i don't think that quote, opposition, unquote, is actually united against Trump. They've had this infighting. They've had this internecine violence, and they keep taking each other down. Recently, there was a situation with Chris Matthews, who I might discuss this in a separate video, but I think you guys should check out the supposed uh, accusations that came out about his behavior by a contributor on, uh, I think, CBS or ABC or MSNBC, wherever Chris Matthews worked. He was on Hardball or something. And he's 75, and he had supposed some behavior towards women that was in this Me Too era that was inappropriate. And then he ended up having a conversation with the the NBC brass, the top brass, and he just, on the start of his show, he just retired and walked off stage. And I don't think that was necessarily planned in a sense, but that happened. And I think the actual reason that actually got him out of there was not those previous accusations, because there's years of that. People knew about that. I think it was him coming out against socialism, him equating Bernie Sanders' potential getting of the of the Democratic nomination to be like a World War II loss of the French by that Austrian guy who was leading the German forces at that time. He equated that, and that was coming out against socialism. I think that is not something that is appreciated by certain aspects of the enemies of Trump. Certain aspects, and that's why I'm saying it's divided. Some of the people are more moderate. Some of the people are rather strongly against this whole far left kind of thing, I would say, to match the far right type of narrative that was coming out when Trump was actually coming out. So that's it for this reading. 
Do you think people are more united under Trump, for Trump? Do you think the opposition is more united against him that's going to put up a bigger force against him and actually win? What do you think has happened to this? Are you more united in your opinion about Trump after these four years of Trump? Let me know. Until next video, which is going to be tomorrow after Super Tuesday, goodbye.